Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here today. This is Nicole with Topaz and I am super excited to have Miss Deb Sandage with us. Hi Deb. Hi. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about Deb. She is the author of Digital Infrared Photography. It's published by Wiley and an instructor at BetterPhoto.com. She teaches enhancing images and creating works of art as well as digital infrared photography classes. She shares her knowledge and enthusiasm with photographers in her many presentations, such as this one, and workshops each year, which are really well known. Deborah's travels have taken her from coast to coast of America and beyond. I love some of her Cuba images to yield photography that stretches the imagination. She has had the joy and privilege of photographing the beautiful people and captivating architecture of Cuba, the rich culture and history throughout Europe, and the stunning dunes and sweeping coastlines of Namibia. Deborah's passion is not only capturing images of people, places, and things with her digital camera, but also in the creative work she does in the digital darkroom like she's going to show us today. She considered considers Photoshop her artist's palette, which I love. So with that, Deb, I will go ahead and give you the screen. Here you are, and let you get started. Thank you once again. I'm really excited to be here to talk about infrared photography with Topaz Labs. Uh, infrared is one of my passions. Um, it's a beautiful way to tell your story. It's very, very different from color. But what I wanted to talk about was creating some really beautiful imagery with black and white effects. You can create a very surreal image. And, and one of the things about black and white infrared imagery is that you can create very dramatic images with an infrared converted camera. You can create very bright grass and green leaves, very dramatic clouds. You can get some very high images with impact. For example, this palm tree. This is a palm tree that I photographed in the area of Palm Beach. The idea behind this, I photographed this with a infrared converted camera using the super blue filter, which is, it enhances the colors to get a lot of really creative, beautiful imagery with this. Now, the reason it's blue, I'm using the channel mixer for this. The channel mixer gives a really high impact image and it will create some, and you have also have the option of creating a beautiful black and white effect as well. Uh, another way you have to work with your images in infrared is to create black and white infrared imagery. This is really one of my favorite ways to shoot. When you're traveling, you, you know, often get very similar kind of image that everybody else has. So you can go ahead and create a really beautiful black and white image, so it just gives you an alternative way to tell your story. So that's one of the one of the things about that. And with infrared, one of the wonderful things is that you can take away the color. And when you take away the color, you're taking away the power of color and the connotations of color. So that is really one of the ways that I like to work with infrared. Certainly removing the color makes a, a more dramatic statement in uh, infrared or black and white. So. It can, it can be very dramatic, so you can see the effect of infrared here on the trees and the background, the clouds are very, very dramatic. The strength of the uh, image is very, relies on texture, the, the light, the shadows. You can create a really kind of a, an image that where the message is, is very clear, and this is why it is a favorite of infrared photographers, fine art photographers. You get a really classic image that uh, is very different. So this gives you a whole new way to tell your story, and that is one of the ways that I like to work with infrared. So you can see in this com comparison that you get a really beautiful way of working with black and white compared to color. As you can see with this image here, you, you can create a very traditional look on the left, but you can go with a really interesting and fascinating look with infrared on the right. So the blue sky effect, this is one of my favorites. You get a really cool um, kind of way to look, work with your Im images, but if you use black and white, Effects, then you can create a, a beautiful, soft, diffuse look, which is also my favorite. Or you can work with a look that is more traditional or nostalgic, and that is really one of my favorite ways to work with this. Uh, here are the key elements of infrared. You have got the bright foliage, you've got the green leaves. Got this, the, the green leaves are going to be tr uh, translated as very bright white in infrared. Water looks often very dark, and skin tones. Skin tones are amazing. So you can see here with the skin tones, it creates a very porcelain look. So on the right, you can see where she's got a lot of freckles and a lot, you know, the very pink complexion. However, in infrared, you get a very porcelain look, which is really, really beautiful. And that's the whole reason that fine art photographers, wedding photographers are all going to work towards using this because you get this beautiful complexion that is able to be reproduced with filters or, or plug-ins. 
So let me talk about real quick, in a nutshell, what infrared light is. We, we experience infrared light in the visible range. However, our cameras can record infrared light in the near infrared range, which is over here on the right. So this, we're talking about infrared converted cameras, so that's going to make a big difference on how the cameras are going to be able to record light compared to like a color camera. So the function of this little filter inside the camera is to block infrared light and also block the ultraviolet light and allows the visible light to reach the camera's sensor. So when we have our cameras modified, you can see right here that they're taking out that little filter that's inside the camera and they're replacing it with an infrared filter. So this allows infrared light to reach the camera sensor and it blocks most of the visible light that you would have reaching the sensor. So the biggest thing is filter choices. What filter choices do you have? You've got a lot of different filter choices. Really, I'm working primarily with the standard or the super color infrared filter. Oh, one of the things I wanted to show you too is that infrared generally is fairly neutral with color and that thing about you can one of the things you can do with that it's really a lot of fun is work with textures and I'll show you how, just how to do that in a moment how to work with black and white effects and using a beautiful layer of texture. Nicole mentioned my blog which is the easy and fun you can get a lot of insights and creativity with that and uh, certainly follow along with me on, on the blog. And also my book of digital infrared photography is available at Amazon so you can find a bit more reference material there. So with that, let me get started and I'll, I think what I'd like to do is to go ahead and start with this image from Santorini. And this is really one of my favorite images. Uh, Santorini is a wonderful place and it's very well visited and everybody photos, photographs it in color and infrared. It gives you a little bit different way to tell your story. So what I wanted to do is work with this with more of a traditional look. Generally the subject matter is going to suggest what direction you want to go with your image. So I will go ahead and open Topaz Labs, Black and White Effects. And here we go, we've got the panel. This is really an amazing uh, software. What I love about it is we have this window over here on the left, and we have all the different effects over here. And under the effects, you have all the different presets, which is really pretty amazing. So as I scroll over these presets, you can see the different effects as they occur over on the top of the window. On the right side of the panel, we have all the different controls. We've got conversion, creative effects, local adjustments and also finishing touches which makes it super easy to work with. So with the traditional collection uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting ones but I kind of want to work with the stylized collection. So the stylized has a lot of different presets and what I like with this I really like the adaptive diffusion with color is if you'll remember there was a little bit of color to begin with in this image so I might be able to retain some of that just a soft wash of color rather than just create an entirely black and white image. So let's see how this looks. So the stylized image here, so here, this is the way it looks right away and I like the presets so it sort of gets you in the ballpark on how things are going to look. So conversion, so I'll go to the first tab and I have choices under basic exposure contrast, brightness, I can boost the blacks or boost the whites, or adaptive exposure. So this is going to be, give me some options here on how I want this image to look. If I want to increase the exposure or active, activate the region slider, protect the highlights or the shadows, these are all options that I have over here. Under creative effects, this is where the preset has invoked diffusion. So diffusion gives me an option if I want to change the softness or the diffusion or the effect of this, of this uh, preset here. So what I think I'll do is just tone down the softness a little bit and also the diffusion. So that gives it a really beautiful, soft look that works really, really well for this image. Uh, it can work with local adjustments if I want to do any type of work there or I could work with uh, the finishing touches and this is where I probably would go to the transparency slider. So if I move this slider all the way to the left then you can see that this actually brings back all this complete black and white image. So if I move this slider over to the right then I'm going to increase the color transparency so you're going to be able to see that soft wash of color that the image started with. So that is really a really cool way to work with the image. 
Um, I do like this, but another one I kind of like is this detailed grunge, and, and that brings out a lot more detail in the image. You can see the clouds become much more well-defined, and the image has a really beautiful black and white look. So what I will do is look at some of these sliders right here, see if there's any adjustments that I want to make. What I might want to do is smooth out that sky slightly, so I'll just reduce some of that adaptive exposures and, and also the details. So just take a little bit out and I think that will work just fine. So what I'll go ahead and do is see if I can move this a little bit and click OK. There, and that brings it back. So you can see where we've gone from start to finish right here. Really easy with that one particular image. That gives you a lot of different ways to, to work on that. So what I'll do next is I'll go to Bridge, and I want to show you a really cool way that you can work with bringing back the color in an image. And this is really a lot of fun. So why don't just go ahead and open Filter, Topaz Labs, Black and White Effects, and go over here to the sliders. So really have a lot of different options. Um, I can go to you know a color look, or I can go to a, a tone if I really wanted to work with tone. But for this image, I think I'm going to go with the traditional look because I want to bring back some of that really cool blue that was in the in the car color. So I'll go ahead to traditional effect and I'll look at this cool tone. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty nice or the cool tone too. Actually, I like that. that. That brings in a little bit more color to the image. So I'll go over here to conversion and look and see what um, if there's any little fine tuning that I wanted to do. What I think I'll do is go to adaptive exposure and I'm going to protect the highlights a little bit and also the shadows. So just, just a little tiny bit to be able to, to work with that. So that's all I'll do in that, in that slider. Then I'll work with localized adjustments. So with localized adjustments, what I'm going to be targeting here is the color. Because I want to bring back the color in the image. So I'm going to keep the brush size about 39. I'm going to increase the opacity. And I'm also going to move the slider over here to edge wear. So when I move the slider to edge wear, what it's going to do is allow me to make these adjustments without affecting the outside of the image. So I'll just paint in the car. That's all I have to do here. That's how simple and easy it is. So I'm bringing back the existing car color in the image. And I'll paint really fast, so I'm not going to get any awards for artistic ability. And we'll just slide this over here. All the good thing is you don't really have to be too fancy. And that's pretty much what happens. So we'll hit click OK. And there we have the car painted from start to finish. So it really makes quite a, quite a big difference. And it's super easy and fast is what I really like about working with this, uh, with this image, especially with cars where I really want to bring back the color. So the thing about infrared, um, especially with the super color filters or even the standard, you do get a little bit of visible light that reaches the camera sensor. So you can work with that light creatively, especially with this car and the, and the color effect that you can achieve. So let's see. We'll pick another image here. Um, let's try this. Oh, I want to show you textures. Actually, let me show you how to do a texture. Uh, this was photographed in Cuba. It was um, at a cemetery. I loved the, uh, the sky behind it. It was just a really beautiful kind of a representation on, on, a, on a, a nice day down in Cuba. And the idea behind this, I thought, Again, the subject matter really kind of suggests what direction you want to work with as far as imagery. So I thought I would like to tone this, and then I'd also like to apply a texture layer. And I can show you how super easy that is to do. So we're going to go back to Tobaz Labs, black and white effects. And we're going to look at tone. And there's so many beautiful tone. Um, tones right here. There's also some beautiful tones in the Van Dyke collection, and I will, I will show you some of those. So as I move over the sliders here on the presets, you can see how it affects that little window in the top. There's a lot of beautiful choices. This is um, the golden blues, which is a really soft effect. And I think I'll go to use something like the selenium. This is really, I'll try the selenium 3. 
And that's beautiful. This this gives it a kind of a gold red shade. Really really nice. Doesn't really overwhelm the image, but gives it more impact. You saw the image before the before and after, which was really a little bit more plain. So this gives it a bit more drama. So what I will do is well I'll go over here to conversion and adaptive exposure. What I'll do is in I'm going to protect the highlights on this too, and, and also the shadow slightly. When I apply the texture layer, it has a tendency to lighten some of the areas a little bit too much. I'm really happy with um, everything else. So look over here. Don't need to add any other techniques or finishing touches. So let me go over here, and I'll return this image to Photoshop. Okay, so here it is. So if you've worked with textures, a really easy way to work with them is to use Mini Bridge. And I'm not sh uh, sure if you're familiar with that, but I'm going to point it out. It's over here. You have Mini Bridge, but you also have it right here. So if I open Mini Bridge, it opens and I can see all the content that I have uh, available. I have a lot of textures that I like to use, uh, textures certainly that, that are purchased textures, but it's really, really easy. So I'm going to just actually want to use this texture. I want to drag it right over. That's all I did, just dragged it with my mouse. Release the texture and it opens as a smart object. So the really cool thing about this is that you can choose it by selecting Enter or Escape if you don't like it. But I, I think I might like this one, so I'm going to go ahead and try a blend mode. Now this is soft light. There's a lot of other blend modes you could use. That's overlay. That gives it a little bit different look, but I like soft light. So that was super easy. So you saw I just dragged it down over the top, and then I'll just, just bring the tool right over here, the transform tool, and then I'll select enter, and that selects the image. So, and to minimize this, just go ahead and push mini bridge again, and you can see before and after. So that gives it a really dramatic, beautiful look, and it's it's very easy to use textures. And with infrared, it, it, it works. You can use toning, certainly with the beautiful toned effects that you have in black and white effects, uh, or and, and add any other uh, textures as well. So it gives you just another way to enhance your creativity with this. Um, let's try this western town. Now this has already been channel mixed, so out of the camera the sky is really going to be kind of a bricky looking uh, shade, and channel mix is going to be this very vivid blue shade. Again, with the channel mixer, don't worry about the channel mixer, there's a tutorial on my website. You're certainly welcome to, to go there and, and check it out. It's just an easy way. So once you've actually saved the channel mixer preset, you don't ever have to go through the steps again. But this is already ready to go, so we're going to go ahead and go to Topaz Labs, Black and White Effects, and we have all kinds of beautiful different uh, selections here. So we have the traditional we could go to or toned. However, I kind of like this uh, Van Dyke brown, which is beautiful. This is going to give the image more of a nostalgic look. And again, the subject matter is going to suggest how you want to work with the image. And if you have a very soft, um, delicate image, you might want to go with some of that stylized diffusion look. Or if you have a nostalgic kind of image like this vintage town, this is certainly a great way to go with the Van Dyke collection. A very cool uh, way of working with it. So I can go to conversion. If there's any other steps that I want to work with this uh, particular image, but I can adjust the exposure or contrast. I mean, I'm actually using the Van Dyke uh, raw umber. So if I want to bring down, perhaps I'd like to bring down, I'll go to hit adaptive exposure and just reduce that a little bit and also protect the shadows because it's a little bright right there. So there. So that works out pretty good. I like that. So this is a really, and actually I'll protect the highlights a little, little bit too to tone that down. So this gives you a really easy way to work with your black and white imagery and infrared. So you can see the before, which the blue really creates kind of a contemporary look where the brown tones really are suggesting more of an image that is vintage. And that's often the idea. Again, that's what the color does to an image. It sort of conveys tranquility or it conveys a, a different type of a, a different type of look. So there we have the uh, very nostalgic looking western town. So this is a really fun way to, to work with your images. So I want to show you something next, too, which is a really a lot of fun. Um, I'm fairly new to Star Effects, but I want to show you some really cool ways you can work with infrared and 
real stars, you can work with real stars too, it's really not hard as you think. I'm going to go ahead and open one of the star images. Now what I've done, actually, I went ahead and duplicated this image. I have it ready in Bridge, so I just have, I have two copies of this so I can show you exactly what's going on. But I love to shoot stars, and, and that's one of my one of my passions. And really, it's not, not that difficult. You just need a tripod, cable release, and uh, I'm using an Icon 14 to 24 uh, lens at the widest aperture for about 25 seconds. If you move past 25 seconds, then the stars might start to blur a little bit. So the real variable factor with, with uh, shooting this is that you're adjusting your ISO to, suit this, uh, to shoot the scene. So that might be a little bit different for you under different light conditions. So generally, in a nutshell, I'm shooting at the widest aperture, exposure, exposing for 25 to 30 seconds, and adjusting the ISO. So that's it, pretty much, in a nutshell. And I also like to shoot star trails. Now, the cool thing about star trails is that you get these beautiful concentric circles if, uh, if you point your camera towards the north. But you have to make a lot of exposures uh, to create uh, a really beautiful star trail effect. And so if you're working with that idea, then you need to go back and, and merge those images in Photoshop. Or you can use an action over here in the action palette. There's actually an action in Photoshop that allows you to create a beautiful star trail effect. So I will show you just how to do that. So the first step is, once you have shot your stars, we're going to go ahead and create some beautiful starbursts with this fantastic software here, StarFX. So let me show you this, how it works. So I'll go down to StarFX, and here's the panel. And it's amazing here. You've got all the different presets that will create beautiful pinpoints of light with all different ways. So you can save your own little presets as well. I have a couple little presets here saved as well. But let me go to Starry Night 3 so you can get an idea since this is Starry Night. We'll see what that looks like on the image. So now you see beautiful star, a beautiful star effect. That's just automatically happens with, with the way that it's set up in this particular preset. And it's not just for stars. So you've got you know the city lights, which are beautiful. You've got all kinds of uh, options. Um, I actually used this on an image where I had shot. Um, and I had little starbursts all throughout the image, but not in the foreground. So I went back and I added a couple of little pretty little lamp posts by using this uh, uh, effect in, uh, in star effects. So it does give you a lot of options. So under the star settings on the right, you can see you've got the option of just seeing the stars combined with your image, or you can go to stars only. And this is what makes it pretty cool, because then you can separate the stars from your original image. So we've got some really cool things going on here with the, with the star effects. So we'll go back to combine so you can kind of see. This particular preset is using the cross star. So we've got the cross star, traditional stars, burst star, hyper stars, all kinds of stars to choose from. And you can uh, actually erase and add these. There's hide and show. So if I needed to take some of these away in my original image, I can do that by using those two features. So the main adjustments are you've got threshold. Now threshold is going to show you how many stars. So the lower the threshold, you'll see a lot of stars. If I move this slider off to the right, then it's going to decrease how many stars are visible. In the image, you can see some of those went away. Luminance does pretty much what you'd expect. It's going to show you how bright they are. So if I want my stars a little brighter, then I just increase the luminance. And I can also increase the size or the angle, which gives you a lot of creative options about direction, especially if you know how your image is going to go. And also the number of points. So this preset is using four points. The spread, of course, you can increase the spread for softer, larger stars. You also have some color adjustments. So if you want to add saturation, and this is really nice with if you have a city where you want to create a little bit of a glow. My image, my final image is going to be more uh, blue and white because I'm working with an infrared image that I've, I've toned with blue. So I'm going to keep the temperature pretty much the way it is. But I have to show you this over here, this additional effects. We have a beautiful glow you can add or even a ring flare. Actually, I'll just go ahead and show you the ring flare. Obviously, it's not going to work with the stars, but you get an idea of what the ring flare would look like. Now, that would be great for if you had a sun or a moon or something you wanted to add some dramatic effects as well. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to choose stars only. 
and that's going to create just a black background for the image. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And I will also open a second image in, uh, in Photoshop, and uh, we'll create some star trails with that, which will be a lot of fun. But the idea is we're going to merge this particular image that you, you see on your screen with the stars. I'm going to merge that with the star trail. So let me go over here to Bridge. And I'll open this image here. And we have star trails, a star image that we're going to create star trails with. So let me move this layers palette over here a little bit so you can kind of see what's going to happen. And I'll go to Actions. And if you need to look for this, this is an action that exists right in Photoshop. So if you need to load it, you can actually click on this little fly out slider and, and choose Load Star Trails, but it's right there. So here we go. So you can see what's happening. As this begins to rotate, we're creating beautiful star trails. You can see over here in the layers palette that it's merging down the layers as, as we go along. And you can see this happening over in the Actions palette. So pretty much it's going to blend the, uh, all those images down and merge them into one. So that is a really cool way to, to work with that. So let me get this visible. Actually, what I'll do is I'll go over here to Bridge. So the idea is that I'm going to move these two over. I'm going to hold the Shift key. I want to slide this over on top of that. So now we have one image on top of the other. You can actually copy and paste it if you want, or you can just hold down the shift key and do it the way I did it. So now we have our star trail image, and it's over the stars. So that's pretty cool. So I like the idea of that. But to make sure that they both show, I'm going to have to change the blend mode. So I'm changing it to screen. So now you can see all the stars with this particular image. So if you wanted to adjust the opacity of that layer, you can. So you do have, you do have some options of, of working with that. But let me go over here to bridge, and I'll show you what we're working with as far as the effect. OK, so here's my final image. So what I will do is show you the layers palette. So this is actually the final image. What I did is I, I created, this is a, uh, an infrared image that I photographed of a castle over in, uh, I believe, in Germany, and, and, and used the beautiful cyanotype of toning that is in black and white effects to create, create this kind of a midnight look. And so I'll, just, I'll just go ahead and turn these off so you can see the actual process here. Here's the star trails combined, and here is the star trails original, and here's the stars, actually the stars that I started with with my original image. So all I did was bring in that, choose that black background and bring that into Photoshop, and then create the star trails with my duplicate image. Remember I changed the blend mode to screen to create that, and that creates this beautiful star effect. Now this is just a fun effect. You could certainly do this with uh, fireworks or sparklers or anything coming up in the summer, so you have a lot of uh, a lot of creative options as well. And then I had the castle, and I had already cut out the castle, so it was ready to be able to import to this image. Now the thing about making it, uh, it's just a fun, a fun picture, but you can, you can add a drop shadow and an inner shadow, and that's going to give it a little bit more depth and help it stand off the page. So this is a really fun way to work with star effects and infrared imagery, and along with uh, black and white effects. So I think that pretty much um, got a couple more things I can show you, but uh, do we have any questions, or how, how do we have, uh, what's happening here? Yeah, we've had lots of questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have a couple, or actually I have tons of questions about the camera that you're using. You are okay. using an, a, a converted digital camera, and there are tons of questions about how you go about doing that. Are there certain companies that you suggest that people do that, and is there a way to get this type of look without having the infrared converted? Oh, excellent, excellent questions. Now, uh, the first thing is I'm, I'm primarily using a Nikon D200 as my uh, camera that's converted to infrared. That particular camera was converted with the SuperColor infrared filter. I also have a few compact cameras that are converted with the R72 type filters. It just makes it really, really easy to uh, shoot in infrared. The difference is um, 
and they do sell filters that go on the lens, but the thing about it is the newer cameras are much more sophisticated and better able to block infrared light. So it makes image, it degrades the image quality. So if you're using an external filter on the lens. And the other factor with that is that the infrared filter is about, it, it approaches the cost of conversion. So it is, it's just almost, um, a, you know, a no-brainer. It's pretty much easier to go ahead and have it converted. I would suggest Live Pixel or Digital Silver Imaging. Both companies are excellent, and, and they'll do a beautiful job with infrared conversions. Great, thank you so much. Let's see here. I had a couple people ask if you could possibly go over the car image one more time in that process oh, sure. with bringing the color back in. Yeah, let me do that. Let's see. Back up to the car. Okay, I'll go back and move this over here a little bit. Okay, this okay. This is pretty much out of the camera. This was an R72 type filter, so there is a lot of blue that sort of exists in in this uh, in this type of conversion. So let me show you that again, really quick. So we'll go back to black and white effects. And I'm going to reset all. So that kind of is like the level where it brings back everything. And what I chose with that, I went to, I think I like the cool tone blue. So, that's, so that sets me up as far as the background, how I like the rest of the image to look. And let me just increase the size of that slightly so you can see how I'm working with this. So originally with this one, I went into adaptive exposure. And I just nudged these up a little bit. Whoops. And I'll go to localize, local adjustments. So here you can see this panel on the right hand side. I've got dodge, burn, color, and we have this little slider over here to adjust the opacity, the hardness, the brush size. Now the edge aware, remember, if I push edge aware, that's going to allow me to paint not necessarily inside the lines. It's going to compensate for my um, my painting. And my opacity, I'm going over here to the right. So that's going to allow me to create the most amount of color. I want to bring back all the color. And I'm just checking the color box here. And then I'm just going to paint. That's pretty much all you have to do. So I'm painting, and that's bringing back the color into the image. So I'm not really applying a new color here. I'm just re applying or allowing the color that's originally with this image to to be able to to show. Does that help? Does that answer um, hopefully the question about about the car? So that's really simple and easy to do. Yes, definitely. It, they were both uh, questions about workflow, so that's perfect. Ah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I have Anne online with us, and she has your book, and she wants, uh, she has a question about your blue skies, how you get the really dark blue skies. She said she has converted NEF to JPEGs and bring them into Lightroom, but when the sky goes blue with the channel mixer, her whites turn peach, and see if you might have any tips. Yes, I do. Actually, um, with workflow, with infrared, um, there's a couple of things. If you're working with the color aspect of infrared, um, anytime you open an image into Adobe, um, it's going to create a little color cast because it can't quite interpret the white balance exactly as you shot it. So th there's always going to be some introduction of color. If you use the native raw converter, that will avoid it. So I, uh, my, my workflow tends to be with a color image, I'll open the image in Nikon Capture NX, and then if I need to apply the noise reduction, then I'll go to denoise and apply the noise reduction second, and then I'll go on to any creative enhancements. You can use, in fact, let me show you. If you make a hue saturation adjustment layer, and you can go over here, choose a certain color, let's say I want to adjust the blues, I could sway the color of the blue. Obviously, you can see we get some really funky wild colors here, and that will let you adjust some of your colors. Or if you wanted to reduce the saturation, let's say the car was red, I wanted to reduce the saturation, you could do that here. So hue saturation adjustment layer. So if you see that peachy color going on, go ahead and make a hue saturation adjustment layer. Choose the color that looks like it's causing an issue over here in the adjustments uh, panel, and you can uh, just reduce the saturation of that. that. That seems to be the simplest thing to do. All right. Thank you very much for that. I hope that helps, Anne. Kathleen says she has a super filter converted camera. Can I process this to look like a regular infrared? Yes, right. A regular infrared. I'm assuming uh, she means uh, that she wants to create a black and white. And that and that is the thing. That's that's the nice thing about the super color infrared. 
The difference between the supercolor and the standard infrared filter is that you're going to get a bit more of a contrasty image with this, the standard infrared filter. So I think that's what, what she's asking there. With the supercolor filter, you might have to make some adjustments to uh, contrast to get all the foliage here to be as bright as white. If you're, on, if you're photographing on a day that's maybe a little bit cloudy, the leaves and grass can get a little dingy looking. But on a bright sunny day, really, you're not going to notice a difference um, pretty much at all. But, but if you're using the uh, uh, just make a curves adjustment or a contrast adjustment and, and just whiten up those uh, you can certainly you can do that, and, there, and actually in black and white effects, you can you can work with that uh, dynamic adjustments there to the slider to increase the uh, brightness. All right, thank you. I do want to address tons of people's questions actually, real quick. Um, everyone has been asking, you know, if you don't have a converted camera, can you still get this type of look? And um, I know that you probably have some tricks as well, but black and white effects does have several presets that simulate it because there's some color mixing available in black and white effects. So you can simulate it to a point, but it's not going to work on every single image. I am going to be going that over that on Thursday. But what do you do you have any tricks about simulating this as well, Deborah? That's a good question, and, and you'll find that it's uh, much hit or miss with mm -hmm. that. Sometimes, uh, sometimes an image is just going to look amazing, um, and I've compared them. I've gone back, and you know, I've got an infrared image, and I've compared it where it's so, so similar, you can't tell the difference. Other images, um, it's going to be most noticeable in the trees, uh, the, the leaves, the uh, foliage, palm fronds, grass. They aren't going to be quite as white. In, in, Compared to infrared, it's just, just it's just the way the surreal quality of infrared light works. Also, certainly with people, since in a, uh, infrared penetrates just a few millimeters into the skin, it's difficult to get that porcelain doll look. That's just something that's just going to happen with an infrared converted camera. But absolutely, um, use the presets because you can get a really cool look by using the infrared presets on on color images if you didn't have an infrared uh, uh, converted camera handy. Wick says, I have Deborah's infrared book and I have a converted camera. My shots come out of the camera a little muddy in many cases. What do you use to pump up the contrast in your infrared? Mm. Okay, so if I'm working with that, what, let, let's, let's just do that. Let's just go over to what I would do is this is where I would go to do, um, the adaptive exposure, and you've got a lot of different options here with increasing, you know, the exposure, and also certainly at, uh, working with the, you know, regions. You've got that option as well. And, and as far as localized adjustments, you can go ahead and choose dodge and burn. And sometimes, you, no matter what you're doing, even in infrared, you've got that image that's just not bright enough where you want it to go. So you can choose dodge or burn, and then just paint in the effect uh, to increase that for localized contrast. Maybe you don't want that contrast to affect the whole image. That does give you some options as far as working with uh, with your imagery. But, but, but generally speaking, if you're working with the color filters, you do have to work a little bit more in Photoshop. And that's why when I start the workflow, if I'm working in Adobe Camera Raw, then I'm working at first to, you know, I'm looking at the image, see what works, what doesn't work, what can be improved, and I try to address those, those factors. If I, if I need contrast adjustments, I'm, I'm doing that all first and, and trying to work that in before I introduce the image into Photoshop and, and then work from there. So just like a color image, the workflow would be to get the image the best it can be, whether you're using the native RAW converter or Adobe Camera Raw. Great. And Darcy says, if you can only afford to convert one camera, which infrared filter would you choose? Oh, that, I get that's a that's a tough question, and I I love the look of you know this. I mean, even out of the camera, that's just such a fun kind of a look. And converting to black and white, um, I I use the R seventy two filter for quite a while. I I tend to like the traditional black and white effect. Um, looking images, you get a real surreal, high contrast look without a lot of uh, work in Photoshop, because simply converting the image to black and white, and it just looks stunning. So we have the high contrast with the leaves and the trees and the foliage and the grass, and just the beautiful effect of infrared on the clouds. So I you know, my, I guess my first choice, I would, I would say the R72, then if you can swing it later, then go for the super color for fun. 
All right, thank you. And just a refresher, if you could show how you did the mini bridge with the textures, I've had quite a few questions about that, that those steps. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, that is it's really a lot of fun. So let me just move all this over here. Um, let me go back to bridge. Let's, let's try this little angel. Okay, so this was with an R72 type filter, just to, and it's pretty much black and white. There's still a little color in here, but that's uh, we won't, what I would do is I would go ahead and, and go real quick to black and white effects, and I would choose a beautiful uh, tone. Let's try. Let's see. I'll go to Tony, and actually I kind of like that. So we'll just we'll just start right there. We'll just leave that. That's the raw umber preset. This is already had that open. So mini bridge is really pretty clever. So it's right here, right here it's, uh, it's all, you'll notice it up here on the top left and it's also on this, the right hand side mini bridge. So you can enable it in, through the menu too, but all I'm going to do is just click here and then I'm going to navigate. So I have my own texture library um, and I've certainly used uh, textures here that I really like to work with. So I just enabled mini bridge and I just touch that texture and I'm dragging this texture over this image. And it, the reason you see this square is it opens as a smart object. So it's just sort of a representation of the actual uh, image. It's not quite like it's there in real life, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. And, the, and what I'm going to do here, I don't even have to do anything except change the blend mode. What I want to do is just see how this looks with the image. So generally, there's a lot of different blend modes you can use. Soft light, overlay, multiply, they're all going to give you some beautiful effects. I'm going to keep with soft light. And if I like the look of this, I'll just go ahead and just bring that up. So this is a transform tool. I'm just fitting this, this texture to this particular image. And then I'll press enter or return. And that actually selects the image. And now the image is, is living, if you will, over the original image. You can turn that effect on and off. And see how just a soft, beautiful, ethereal look with the beautiful toning that I had originally with this. And that just accentuates the toning, accentuates the infrared image. And again, infrared just tends to work really, really well with that type of, uh, type of an image. And you can um, adjust the opacity. So if that's a little too intense, you can change that. So I just move this opacity slider over here on the right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's just really simple. So the trick is really just to navigate to your folder ahead of time, and, and so you have all your, your texture layers, um, your textures available to you. But that's all. That's all there is to it. It's very simple and easy. And there's a tutorial on my blog, too, if, if anyone has questions later, too. You're yes. certainly welcome to send me an email. <laughs> we do have quite a few questions saying, wait a minute, tell me more about textures. So that's good you have a, um, a tutorial on the blog. So that's good. Can you talk about a little about digital infrared and HDR? Are you able to shoot HDR um, imagery or go through that process when you're using infrared? Is it something that you suggest and is it something that you find that you like? Yes, absolutely. There's a section in my book about infrared and HDR and, and absolutely the same things really apply. And, and In fact, probably more so with infrared because it, with some images in color we can put a neutral density filter over the, um, the lens and be able to tone down certain areas. And, and then, but if you have an irregular shape, certainly like this angel, that's not going to fly. But with infrared, neutral density filters really don't, especially with the R72, don't have so much of an impact. So definitely working with the idea of HDR to balance the tonality in the scene where the light is too strong in one area and, and, and not strong enough in other areas. So the dynamic range can be corrected, certainly with infrared, as it can be in color. It works just fine. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us, Deborah. I learned a lot about uh, infrared and the actual conversion of the camera because I used to shoot infrared film, but never digital infrared. So it's really interesting. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely a lot of fun. All right. Well, thanks again. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you're able to join us for another webinar soon. Thank you.